Hello everybody, today I'm going to do something different and discuss the solutions to the most recent USGO contest. I will start with discussing the bronze contest and uh, in the first video you are watching I will be discussing the solution to the first problem which is logical moves. So in this problem uh, we are given a boolean statement that has n keywords long and uh, we know that the length of the statement is odd uh, and it's uh, it contains only true false and an or so basically as if we had uh, a statement with bitwise operations and also operators so uh, we want to uh, yeah we also know here the priority of the operations and uh, we want now uh, to solve Q queries in which in each query we are given two integers L and R and we want to delete the segment so that by putting uh, a statement of uh, our wish so uh, actually one of these true or false we can either make it true or false to make the final statement true or false so a very important thing is that it given that the statement is somewhat longer it's very important to be careful about uh, first knowing what these operators do so they are the well-known bitwise operators and and or and also it's very important to know and to be careful about the fact that and has a bigger priority than or so just like in c++ we have to do this now for example here we have these seven queries and a statement of length five and uh, for example uh, if we were to uh, modify uh, all of the operators from first to three, the third position false and true with uh, so that we have it a true we can put either true or false because we already have uh, an or that's with something that's true so as you know when we do bitwise or everything is going to be true if at least one variable is true so just so you know now how do we go by doing something like this so first off we want to codify this so that uh, we only have to deal with uh, let's say numbers so for example what i did to resemble more closely what these uh, truth values are i just started with having false as zero true as one uh, and as two and or as three so uh, as I read the strings instead of having to deal with strings and to deal with unpleasant unpleasantly difficult operations I just transformed it into an array of n integers because it's way easier to deal with that than it is to deal with uh, let's say uh, an array of strings from an implementation perspective now let's try to think at how do we do these queries because uh, we have many of them and the string is also long so the first approach is of course to try out uh, for each query each of the true each of the two operators and just solve the problem but the issue with this approach is that while it's gonna be correct uh, the implementation is both let's say slow and also you will uh, you will also need to implement uh, the simulation which can be quite difficult to do so this operation this uh, solution will have uh, quadratic complexity or more like n times q and it's not gonna pass beyond uh, this subtask or if you implement it well this subtask so you can also implement uh, there are also slower simulations out there so you need to be careful about this aspect now uh, we want to optimize this and uh, in order to optimize this at least what I did was to start off with some pre-computations but before the pre-computations come let's go with some observations so we can simplify the statement as a bunch of uh, operators and expressions that are bordered by a bunch of ors why do we do this because uh, uh, 
and operations have a higher priority than R and it's more convenient to do that. So we have this and if we were to talk from uh, a logical perspective, if any of these, uh, let's say, subarrays contains only true, then the entire statement will be true because the ors in between, like if there is one true, everything will be true. So now that we do this, we need to make sure that whenever we deal with removing a subarray, uh, we can tell for sure whether the statement is true or not. So, and take note that the subarray can contain multiple of these smaller subarrays. For example, uh, we can remove even something like this. And we need to be careful about what to store here. So, now a thing we can do is that uh, if we know that we have a bunch of, uh, let's say, ORs and also a bunch of these subarrays, we can store for each position where are the most near uh, OR values to the left and to the right. So let's say that the ORs are here and uh, you, can't, you won't be able to really see it here, but uh, somewhere up to the right of this one. So. Uh, Sorry for making this drawing a bit off. I can modify it now. So let's say that this subarray is somewhat smaller and then uh, we have another OR. So uh, we can also accommodate that. Now, what happens is that for each part of the array that's between two ORs, we can tell for sure whether it will end up being true or false because whenever we have something that's surrounded by ands we want everything to be true so in a contrast to ors we want everything to be true because otherwise let's say if we have a zero it doesn't matter that everything up to here was true so now that we did it uh we want to also observe that uh, we can pre-compute these two so what we're gonna do after this is that uh, for each subarray, after we pre-computed where the most recent uh, ORs are, we can also pre-compute uh, how do the statements evaluate up to each OR. And because this helps us in order to decide whether it makes sense to keep trying or the answer is predetermined. And also another thing to do is that from that or onwards we want to also see where the most recent false uh, variable is because if we have a bunch of things that are surrounded by ands if let's say we have a false here this part of the array let's say in between these two ors is also going to be false and in order to get everything true we will have to rely on the fact that there will be no subarrays to the left of the first or or to the right of this other or which are true. So in nutshell, we want to pre-compute uh, where the most recent OR has occurred for each of the uh, traverses, left to right and right to left. And also we want to pre-compute where the most recent false variable uh, was, both from left to right and from the right to left for each position. And based on these, you will see, as I will show you in my implementation, that there are just a few cases. And it, while the implementation is quite difficult for bronze, it's also an implementation that can be split in several cases. So uh, each case is going to be easier to deal with individually. So now here is also a, write, a written lookup. So I have the type of the variable. I want to uh, see uh, with each letter each string starts so we don't need the entire string to decide that we pre-compute where the last ors were to the left and to the right also the last false variable just like I told you and now we want to pre-compute these sub expressions for the left and right we know that if one variable has been true everything is true and uh, we now want to compute each sub expression so we need to be careful about doing that. Also the same to the right. So as you can see, even though this code looks quite long so far, half of it has been basically just uh, 
copy pasting uh, what I did previously and just uh, adapting it from left to right to right to left. And now I just need to deal with the cases and each query. So I know where the last OR is for the left and to the right, so for each direction. Of course, if these are true already, then we can modify the statement. So we need to see if it's false or true. Otherwise, I have some cases. So if everything is false, we can make it false too. And uh, if it's true, then we want uh, these last false uh, places to be beyond these or so not inside our interval because that would mean no and otherwise we can do it we are fine and that would be an yes now uh, just as just a disclaimer before i finish the video uh, this is not going uh, to be maybe the most simple solution you will ever see i hope it is but uh, as of the time i'm recording this there are still about uh, four and a half hours left in the window so by the time you will see this video which will be after the contest window is over uh, there is a chance that you might see uh, the editorials being published or some other solution i just wanted to present something that uh, i saw during the contest and also the way i got to the solution in order for uh, you to be able to see how to do such problems in contest conditions while also learning something new from them. And speaking of which, I hope you found the video useful and enjoyable. And if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, stay tuned to the content I will post. And also make sure to check out more ways in which you can interact with me, including classes, uh, extra problems, and many other ways so once again thanks for watching this video and see you next time cheers